Hi there, welcome to this first absinthe video from me, Mark, in 2014. Now, I was going to do a upright bass, like what I did in uh, Zebra the other day there. But when messing around in absinthe and trying to come up with that, I got a bit lost and I got kind of sidetracked. And I discovered something that maybe annoys you guys as much as it annoys me. And it's things like drawing waves and how to save them and how to use them in a different patch. Now, any waveform can be used in a multiple of different places. So in the oscillators, in the wave shapers, for instance. Now, it takes a bit of getting used to drawing your own waves and understanding the frequency content and whatnot and why you would use a specific wave to do a specific thing. But even before you get anywhere near that, if you don't know how to draw them and you don't know how to save them, it can get a bit frustrating, believe me. So I thought I would just show you that today. So what we've got here is an oscillator and it's just a simple sine wave. Now if I click on sine, you've got the simple waves, which is all your standard waves and some quite non-standard waves. Then you've got your Morphin Waves, which you can also create on your own as well, which I'll show you in another video. And there's all kinds of different ones. And you've got the Library Waves, which is where your own waves would be saved. And some other waves that come with Absinthe are there, so smooth like Newton. And the great thing about these waves is they're very good starting points for specific things. So if you were looking to make some kind of metal sound, that's a specifically a format, what you would then do is go new, and then you've got it here, and then you could come in here, and depending on what you want to do, draw your own one and then save it. But what we'll do is we'll start with a new sound. We'll go to the patch, we'll go to sign. Now the first thing, we'll go to sign waves, eh, simple waves. The first thing, you can hit edit, but you'll be editing that one there. The best thing to do is hit new, and it gives you this new sine wave that you can then edit. You can also come up here and call it whatever you want, but we'll get to that in a moment. So what have we got here? We've got straight line editing, which is exactly what it says on the tin. So it's pretty self-explanatory. And as soon as, the great thing about it is, as soon as you start drawing, if you've got something that you can play, let me just go in here and make sure this only plays one note at a time. You can hear how you change the sounds. You know, you can hear how each line that you draw changes the sound itself. see with the line you just you can draw you can either choose so if I click there it should straighten it all out so you can choose a point it will draw a line choose another point it will draw another line or let me try and straighten this up you can draw keep your hand on it move anywhere you want and that's just with a straight line so basically it's a point and click really. You want a line there, you want a line there, you want one there, you want one there, you want one there. Uh, let's draw... Basically that's a sawtooth. So you could, I could probably draw a square tooth with this as well, I would imagine. Well not a square tooth, a square waveform. Nice. And then if we go to the squiggly line, that's when you can start to draw your sine waves and stuff. So it's probably best to kind of start from here, kind of go up. And it's the same It's the same principle. It's a kind of click and drag type deal. Obviously that's 
I'm fitting two cycles into where there should really only be one. Well, it doesn't have to be one cycle, but you get what I mean. Like, if I go back, if I was to put that back to sine, it would just be one sine wave covering that section. But again, it's up to you. It's up to you what you want to do. And then if you click this and then move something, it'll move only the things in between the two sections. So again... can't do anything outside of these two but what I can do is move them so maybe you've drawn one piece that's perfect and you are like oh man I've got to change that other piece but when I change that I might accidentally just do it like this then and you can really change and you can go back and maybe do some finer adjustments and then go back to here and move and then start to shape your your um your waveform to however you want it. As you can see, I'm moving a whole piece at once. Now, the great thing about being able to do that, and the great thing about being able to draw your own. Um, waveforms in is that you can just have it playing and then if you find something that you like think oh I bet I could use that for something you just save it so Duff it up every now and again. Just put your points and then go back. Just try and move some stuff. I like that because it's got a lot of high frequency content. That's to do with the amount of cycles. But it sounds like it's high pass filtered, which I like for psychedelic trans sounds. So I would maybe do a couple more. Maybe try your best to end it. So when you've got what you want, you can mess around with the offset. So if I put the offset back to zero, that's it bang on the center point crossing now. It's bang on. So I can now save that. But what I can also do before that, let's just zero dB it. Okay, so I've now got that. But what I can also do before I save it, I've got the spectrum. Now that's the spectrum of the waveform. Let's see what happens if I do this. Right, see the, how the waveform's changed? That I like. Sort the offset out. Right, let's see what it's done to the actual spectrum. So if I now kind of try and draw that spectrum into something like what it was earlier. Right, it's okay. It's almost. So you can use the combination of both of them to fine-tune the wave even more than what you can with these two. So again, I'll put that back to 0 dB. So... <laughs> Right, okay. So now that I've got my wave, I just click here where it says transform. You've got loads of other um, options. I'm not going to go on any of these at the moment. I might just normalize it. However, it shouldn't do anything because it's at zero dB. Um, so if I just go to save wave template, tell it where you want it to save, and it should always be in the wave user section. Okay, so I've given it a, a name that kind of is, so MNG, that's me, wave one, sawish. So I okay that. So I've now got that saved. So if I come now, file, new sound, go back to my patch, I've got my oscillator here, click on sign, 
and go to Library Waves, Wave User. There it is. There we go. But uh, however, as I said, if we put in a Wave Shaper, click on Sign, it's there as well. Now it's getting nice and chunky. Especially when you pay something like a fifth. And of course, you can then go in and change the envelopes and then, change, then you would save it as a sound. Remember, all that is that we've done at the moment is saved it as a wave type or an oscillator preset or whatever it is that you want to call it. Now, where else could we use it? We could use it in here, frequency shift, click on sign. There it is. So we've now got it three times. It's almost like noise. Lovely. And um, let's see if there's anywhere else we can use it. It wouldn't be in that because that's a filter. So a ring modulator. Yeah, we could have it in there. Frequency shifter. The wave shaper, of course. And that's it. I thought I'd just show you that because it's it was bugging me earlier. Um, for whatever reason, I just couldn't remember how to do it. I, it took me ages to figure it out. But the best thing, obviously, is that whenever you create it, I can now go in. Let me just turn off the wave shapers. I can now open up, let's say, another oscillator. Go to double, sign, open it up. So there it is. <laughs> So we've now got it twice, but I can still go and hit new, so it brings that up, and now I can change it all again. Do whatever I want to it, so if I just wanted to add. See, it's still drawing the wave that was there, that's pretty cool. Not really. Or is it? It is, I think. Um, so yeah, you can then go in, mess around with the spectrum again if you wanted to. Let's just go stupid. Right, I want to have a little bit of something everywhere. Don't want to go too daft. Then go back to the waveform. Back to the patch. It's kind of got a weird ringing to it. Change the offset, make sure it's set. Again, transform, save wave template, give it your name, and that's it. You've now got those two from that one, and just go crazy. But if you want more details on the wave window, okay, I think I think my colleagues already done a lot of that. But if there's something specific that you would like to know about it, uh, just let me know. But um, I'm now going to work on this patch, see if I can make a sound alike, and save it. I hope you enjoyed this. Nice quick one for the beginning of 2014. Any requests, please let me know. I'll get straight on it for you. And I hope you had a good new year, and hope this year's better for everyone. Thanks a lot.